Hello guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be walking you guys through my YouTube setup, exactly how I create these YouTube videos based off of the filming and the settings within my camera, the equipment that I have, all of that fun stuff. Everything will be linked in the description bar down below as well. So if you wanna buy, let's say my tripod or my lights, I will include them in the description bar. But I have gotten a couple of comments on here saying that you guys also have a Canon EOS M50. So that's the first thing you guys should know. I am shooting on a Canon EOS M50. And you say that the quality of your videos isn't the same as mine and it's probably because I changed a few of the settings within my camera to get this picture quality. I have said it in a couple of videos that when I first got this camera I really didn't love the picture quality and I was so disappointed because I was so excited for this camera and I learned that I just had to change a few settings and now actually this video is going to be completely it's not gonna be completely unedited, but I am not gonna do any color correction. So this is the quality of image that I get with the settings that I have on my camera. So that is the first thing that I wanna walk you guys through the whole camera setup. This is the Canon EOS M50 right here. So when I bought it, I bought it from Best Buy and I did buy it in a pack. So I didn't just buy the body. I ended up getting the lens with it as well. So this is a 15, to a 45 millimeter lens and I always have it on 15 when I am shooting. Now, one of the other things that you guys may want to know is what SD card I am using with this. Off the top of my head, I do not remember and the SD card is currently in it. So I just know that it's a 64 gigabyte. I will actually include it in the description bar down below because I bought it off of Amazon, so it's very, very easy to find the link. I truly do love this camera and if you are looking into purchasing a camera as a beginner YouTuber, I would recommend this one. You can see me in the viewfinder there. What's up? The settings that I use, so I actually do use the video recording setting when I am recording. This is what I see over here. So one of the things that I set up when I first got this camera, I wanted to know how I could get this timestamp right there. And you can actually get that just by clicking this info button over here. So I'm going to click that again just to show you guys. It goes away and then it comes back. So I like having this set up because another thing that I like to do, I like to adjust the exposure right here. So if I think that I want the video to be very, very light and bright, I would never have it that much. I can change it easily right here. So I tend to stick around plus one. That's my favorite. I like my videos light and bright. It's a personal preference. But if I go over here, actually, I have to sadly stop recording this and you guys are gonna get terrible audio from my iPhone. I'm sorry, bear with me. Okay, so I am going to hit the menu button over here and and this is what is going to pop up if you guys have never used this before. So these are some of the settings in case you guys are curious about any of this. These are the settings that I have right here. I'm gonna go over. You can of course adjust the exposure here. I like doing it on the front page. It makes it a little bit easier for me. And then if we go down to picture style, this is the main thing that I changed. So I ended up watching a YouTube video that gave me a few other settings that I could try out within this. So they recommended neutral with these settings. And then I think, I think that was it. And then I ended up adjusting auto because I didn't like the way neutral looked at all. Okay, so if we click on info right over here, that is gonna get us to the spot where you can edit this. So I have got the strength at six. So you can see where it used to be, this faint one right here compared to where I have it over here. The contrast I dropped down, the saturation I brought up and the color tone I dropped down. And with those settings, that is how I get this video quality that you guys see. So I want to show you right now, this is using natural light, we are in my office, but I want to show you guys what this looks like outside. So let's say you, I don't know, shoot car videos or something outside. I don't shoot any videos outside, but I wanna show you guys how it could possibly look. So outside, oh, I just walked right into the sunlight. I think the colors are actually still pretty good. Typically what I shoot is inside, so I don't really see it like this, but I like the color quality with the settings that I have on this camera. And then this is what the image quality looks like with artificial lighting. So I've got two studio lights going on right now. I've got one up here over to my left, one up and to the right, right behind my camera actually. So I've got good lighting coming in this way, good lighting coming in this way. And yeah, that's the difference between natural light indoors, natural light outdoors, and then artificial light indoors. I do not use lights like I've got a hanging pendant light right here. I do not use warm toned lights, just normal lamps that you have in your house. I would not recommend that because that is going to mess with your image quality. Whenever you guys see me shooting in my living room, whenever you see this backdrop, it means that I am using natural lighting. So I have got this big window right here. 
which is so, so great for letting in a lot of natural light. But what I will say is that this room is not great if I want to use my artificial light. So this space is way too big for the lights that I have. Maybe in the future, if I get more advanced lights, then this room would be fine. But typically, if it's an overcast day and I wanna shoot with my artificial lights, I am in my office shooting in there. Now, when I am shooting in my living room, there are two pieces of equipment that I like to use. Just so I can show you guys these, I've got my camera on my Fergo right now, but it adds perfect height. So I use this tripod right here, which is a Dolica Pro Line. It's a professional aluminum tripod and it is freaking legit. Alex actually got this for me when I was in college. I did major in photography in college and I shoot all my photos on my Instagram myself using this tripod. It is so amazing. It gets very, very tall. And one really cool feature about this is that these down here actually slide in and then there's points. So if I am shooting outside, this will actually go right into the grass compared to inside. That then turns into a nice rubber stop for my hardwoods, which is so great. But this tripod is freaking awesome. It gets taller than me. Actually, yeah, no, when it's uh, uh, fully extended, I think it's about right at my forehead and I am 5'9", 5'10", ish. So this is a pretty awesome tripod. I will include it in the description bar down below. And then the second tripod that I use right here, this is a Sunpack FlexPod DX. And I ended up getting this at Best Buy, but I know that it is available on Amazon as well. Alex bought this on Amazon. So that's the link I'm gonna include in the description bar down below. But this is a nice little tripod for whenever I am shooting here, sitting down on the floor by my couch. I will have this tripod set up on this table right here. That worked out well. I will have this tripod set up on this table right here and my camera will be on that. Or if I am shooting at my desk when it's facing more so towards me, so it looks like you guys are sitting kind of by my computer, I will be using this as well compared to all of the other shots that I get are either taken by me holding my camera, you guys have seen that plenty of times, or I am using this tripod. When I'm shooting in my office, there are two forms of light that I like to use. So today is a gorgeous, bright and sunny day. So I could just use my window lighting over here. I've got my desk set up over here so that when I shoot, my camera's right here and it's pointing this direction towards us right now. So the lighting is perfect. Now I have to say that I prefer this room when the lighting is not great outside because my artificial lights can light up this room so well because this is a pretty small room. This is considered a bedroom in our house, but honestly, it is the perfect size for an office. So I want to show you guys my artificial lights. These are my lights when they are broken down and this is Photo Studio Pro limo studio so i'm not sure the official brand of these i will of course include the exact ones in the description bar down below because alex bought these off amazon so i can easily get the link from him but these all came together in a pack actually there are two big tripods like this and then three lights like this which i will show you guys the lights there are two umbrellas which i will show you guys the diffuser umbrellas as well two of these which hold the light on there and then actually i lied there are three of these which hold the light on there and then this tripod is significantly smaller so i do have one small tripod two big tripods that came with this but all the hookups to have all three lights on just only two diffusers so i'm thinking about getting a small umbrella diffuser for this guy so i can add a little bit of backlighting so it's not as contrasty but i'm not going to break that down in this video because that's not something that i currently use so Let's get these bad boys set up. Alex actually got these for me, I think a year ago, and they have been so incredibly, incredibly helpful, especially in the winter when it's kind of more so dreary out, or even just rainy spring days and it's dreary out. These are a lifesaver. Let me actually drop you guys down a little bit. So this is what it looks like right now. Typically what I do, I bring it up so it's about eye level with me. Actually, that's probably more so at my nose. That is where I like it. I'm going to tighten it there. Then. You have to add this piece right here, which clamps on to the tripod and then holds the light. Actually, I'm realizing this is way too tall. I'm gonna drop this down a little bit. Perfect. Then we have got light bulbs right here. And then, let me actually show you guys. So. This is just the tripod as is with the light. I'm gonna plug it in. I've got an outlet right here, which is nice. We're gonna turn this on. If I use just the light, you can see right now, honestly, the contrast, it is so, so harsh. Now I wouldn't obviously have the light that close to my face, but now let's add the diffuser. So this is an umbrella diffuser and what it does, it just makes the light a little bit softer. 
you need these 100%. Can you just tell the difference in the lighting? I feel like it is night and day. The other one is so much more harsh where this one is diffused. Obviously it has a diffuser. So I really do love my lights. I use two of them at a time. So I'm gonna set up the other one and then show you my official setup, what I usually do here in my office. There are two main scenes setups that I like to use when it comes to shooting in my office. So this is one of them. This is a camera wall back here. And then you guys see my gallery wall and computer over here. So I have got one tripod set up over here that has a light. I've got my camera in the center and then light over on the right. I think it is important to balance out the light from left to right because otherwise, honestly, you're gonna have shadowing from one side and it just, it doesn't look that good. So I like to think that this lighting right now it looks pretty good, you know? I also wanna show you that this is my tripod almost fully extended right now and this is the shot that you see. So I like to make sure that there's a little bit of room above my head, especially because right now I have got a bun so I wanna make sure that's included. I don't really enjoy when my shots are like this even though I know I still get some of those shots. I'm trying to avoid it. The second way, or the second scene, that I like to get when it comes to my office is right here. So I like to have you guys looking at me this way or I have you sometimes over here. And I already told you guys, if I have you over here, I have you on a different tripod. Right now you're on my tall tripod and I still feel like you're a little bit crooked, but let me show you guys the lighting situation. So again, with the high quality iPhone video. So this is what I look at right here. I've got my camera on my tripod currently recording. The legs are no longer fully extended. So I've got one of them collapsed in, two of them are fully out. And then this is the tiniest bit lifted, but I've got that there. I've got one of my lights up over to the right and I do like to have it a little bit higher. And then this one over to the left is a little bit shorter. This is what I see when I am sitting. And this light helps to make sure that I've got enough light coming from the side and hitting the background so it's not too overly contrasted. And I have said this before, whenever I am shooting in my office, I have to lay down some kind of soundproofing to absorb the sound. My office has not really a lot in it that can absorb the sound, meaning cushy furniture or pillows, things that actually capture sound, you know? So I have to lay down blankets and cushions to get rid of the echo. And I do use the built-in mic on this camera, so I do not have another mic that I attach to the top and plug in an external mic. I just use the mic that came with this camera. And I know that it's not the best quality in the world, but I don't think it's that bad, especially if I lay down good soundproofing. I can tell when my soundproofing isn't that great because I can hear the echo. So in the future, I do plan on investing in a microphone that I can put on top of this camera, but right now I'm just rolling with the built-in mic. And I think that is it when it comes to my YouTube setup and how I get these videos. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I am not going to be doing any color correction. So what you see is what I get when I initially import my clips into iMovie. Of course, I'm going to be doing other editing, like cutting out my breathing and the boring parts and my mistakes and all that fun stuff. So I hope you guys liked this video, found it helpful. Maybe you learned a few more settings that you can try within your Canon EOS M50, or maybe you found a new tripod or even my lights because I freaking love my lights. So that is it with this YouTube video. I really hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. If you guys have any other YouTube related videos that you would like to see here on YouTube, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will get those created for you guys. Otherwise, I'm out of here. Bye guys.